So we have a view object called Departments view. Right, so let's look at it. Um, it's a normal thing based on department with a bunch of attributes. Um, what we're going to do here is in the Java section, we're going to specify that we actually want to create the implementation class for it. Okay, like that. Then we can go in and we can actually write methods if we want to. So um, let's write a void method. Call it uh, do something. Right, and we can have parameters to this method. So for example, we can have depth name. And we can have, sorry, um, and another string, um, and then just do something, doesn't really matter what. So, for example, um, So basically we're just using the two parameters in here. Now of course you're inside the view object so you can do all sorts of uh, methods on the view object. So you can do things like um, set workloads or um, any other like um, remove or whatever you want to do here, right? Add. So you're basically just free to do whatever you want. <coughs> on the view object. Anyway, that's our method. What we want to do now is actually expose it to the client. So we can just click here and say move it to the right side. And this is very similar to doing a service method on an application module level. But this is at a specific view object level. Right, so now let's go and design a page. And on this page, refresh the data control. And first of all, under the view, you can now see the method. So what we're going to do is actually bring the view in as a form, like that. Okay, and then there's the method. Take the method and bring it in, let's say over here, as um, a button. There are two parameters here that we need to decide what to show here, and I'm not going to set them right now, I'm going to do it in a second. Okay? So I got a method, and there's the two parameters that we still need to fill out. So the value for one of the parameters is the department name, so we ju can just copy whatever is in here in the value. So copy this one, go to the binding, and you'll see the department name here, just set the value. Okay. Now the second thing is something we want to get as a parameter for our page. So we basically want to run the page, accept a parameter on the URL, and get this value into this method. To do that, what we're going to do is take the ADF config file and take our page and drag and drop it into the diagram. Right? Like that. So one of the things you can set for a page is page parameters. So I'm just going to enlarge this so you can better see what I'm doing here. Right? And we're going to add a parameter and then the form value. Right? You need to specify form well. So because I'm picking up from the um, parameter passed to the page, we can just do this. Call the parameter amount. Right? So just remember that the name of the parameter on the URL needs to be amount. And the two value, because we are only using it inside the page, we can use the view scope for this one. And we can call this one amount to just to eliminate confusion. So this one would be a view scope amount two. Okay. So uh, as you can guess, the second parameter is what we need to specify in the page as the second parameter for the method. So if we actually look at the binding, the method, second parameter, the value here should be the view scope amount too. Okay. Um, just to make it maybe a little bit more interesting, we can also take 
and just use output text components on the page to show the parameter and so we can just put it let's say here okay so we'll know if the parameter got in All right let's save everything and run the page All right, so we can choose a department. Now, by the way, we didn't pass parameter yet, so maybe this is what we should do. Now, one thing to note here, when we're running the page, it's without the JSPX extension, right? So if you actually look at the um, log file here, this is the URL that we're invoking. So let's copy this one. Okay, go back here, paste it, and just pass a parameter. So um, we call the parameter amount, for example, 800 and invoke the page. So we can see the value here, right? We can browse to another department. And so the value is still here. Um, we're using purchasing and we click the do something button. Okay. Let's go over to J Developer and when you look at the log window you can see the amount specified over here, just coming from the method that was invoked on the view object. And that's it.